Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all ready for some Star Trekking, because this video will go over an Enterprise feature. But seriously, on an authentic note, I'll cover remote access control in collaboration with Authentic Security. What is RAC? RAC is an acronym for Remote Access Control. The overall setup in a nutshell involves creating a property mapping, or rather the base configuration required, such as the host name or IP address, as well as any required username and password, amongst other settings, to connect to remote hosts. After this, setup is similar but not quite the same as setting up apps and providers. You'll still need to create an app for remote access control and its matching provider, and here's where it differs as you will need to create your endpoints, or rather the points or devices at the end of your network route, to connect to. From there, a remote access control outpost needs to be deployed so that the remote access application created can be reached externally. Click the link in the description for this overview page. So again, remote access control endpoints are set up a little bit differently than your standard applications. So let's go ahead and log in and set a few up. Go ahead and navigate to your authentic instance and log in with your admin account. Once logged in, go ahead and click on Admin Interface, and click on Customization to expand it. Click on Property Mappings, and click on Create. Go ahead and choose the RAC Property Mapping, and click on Next. The first endpoint I'll be setting up will be RDP, so I'll go ahead and name this RDP. And under General Settings, go ahead and enter the username and password for your remote desktop that you'll be connecting to. Next, click on RDP settings to expand it. Scroll down a little bit. And for ignore server certificate, go ahead and choose enable. And what this will do is bypass the warning you usually get when trying to RDP into a Windows system. Otherwise, this RDP endpoint through Authentic will hang there waiting for an interaction to confirm the warning. Go ahead and enable any other options you might want here. But I'll go ahead and leave them as is and click on finish. From here, click on applications to expand it and click on Applications, and I'll go ahead and use the wizard, so I'll click on Create with Wizard, and give your application a name. I'll go ahead and name this Remote Access, and click on Next. Here, go ahead and choose Remote Access Provider, and click on Next. Notice the wizard pre-populated the name for us, so next we'll choose our authorization flow, and for me, I'll go ahead and choose the default provider, Authorization Implicit Consent. And under Property Mappings, choose the property mapping we just created. And click on Submit. It says your application has been saved, so I'll go ahead and click on Close. Next, click on Providers. Click on the provider we just created. And under Endpoints, click on Create. Give your endpoint a name. To make it simple, I'll go ahead and name mine RDP but feel free to name yours whatever you'd like. And for protocol, choose RDP. And under host, be sure to enter the host name or IP address for the system that you want to connect to. Also, if you've changed the standardized RDP port number of 3389, be sure to append it here with a colon and the updated port number that you've set. Under maximum concurrent connections, I'll go ahead and change this to negative 1 to disable the limit. Otherwise, change it to something practical for your use case. And under Property Mappings, be sure to choose the property mapping we created earlier. And click on Create. We will now need to create a remote access control outpost because without one, there's no way to access our remote access application with our configured endpoint. So, from here, click on Outpost and click on Create. Go ahead and give your remote access control outpost a name. I'll go ahead and name mine remote access control and for type be sure to choose RAC and under integration I'll go ahead and choose local docker connection and under applications go ahead and choose the application we created and click the arrow to move it over to be selected next click and expand advanced settings and just double check to confirm that your authentic host is correct and click on create now we'll give our outpost a few moments to spin up and we'll refresh the page to look for a green checkmark health status. 
Okay, let me go ahead and click on refresh. And our outpost status is healthy with a green check mark. So from here, I'll go ahead and click on user interface. And on the applications dashboard, we see that our remote access application is listed here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now we've connected to our remote desktop with the RDP protocol within our browser. So I'll go ahead and open up another tab to navigate back to my authentic instance and close the RDP tab. So now let's set up an SSH endpoint or secure shell endpoint. Click on admin interface, click on customization, click on property mappings, and click on create. Click on RAC property mapping and click on next. Go ahead and name your property mapping. For simplicity, I'll go ahead and name mine SSH. And under general settings, go ahead and enter the username and password for your secure shell connection. And click on finish. From here, go ahead and click on applications to expand it. And click on providers. And click on our remote access provider. Under endpoints, click on create and go ahead and name your endpoint whatever you'd like. For simplicity, I'll go ahead and name mine SSH. For protocol, be sure to choose SSH. And again, for host, be sure to enter the host name or IP address for the system that you'll try to connect to. And again, for maximum concurrent connections, I'll go ahead and enter a negative one to disable the limit for this demonstration. For property mappings, be sure to choose the SSH property mapping we created and click on create. And we should be set, so let's go ahead and click on the user interface. And again, click on our remote access application. And as you can see, now we have two endpoints listed. So I'll go ahead and choose the SSH endpoint. And as you can see, we successfully connected to our secure shell. However, it scaled a little bit off, so let me go ahead and adjust the zoom of my browser. And again, as you can see, we're in our secure shell within the browser. So let's go ahead and open up another tab and navigate back to our authentic instance and close our SSH tab. Let me change my zoom level back to 100%. And now we'll go ahead and set up a VNC endpoint. So click on admin interface. Click on customization to expand it again and click on property mappings. Click on create and choose RAC property mapping. Click on next and give your property mapping a name. I'll go ahead and name mine VNC and under general settings go ahead and enter the password for your VNC connection. And click on finish. Next click on applications to expand it and click on providers. Click on our remote access provider and click on create under endpoints. Go ahead and give your endpoint a name. Again, for simplicity, I'll name mine VNC. And for protocol, choose VNC. And for host, go ahead and enter the IP address for the host that we're trying to connect to. As well as the port number. I found that if I don't add the port number, at least for VNC endpoints, I have issues connecting. So I'll go ahead and include that here. For maximum concurrent connections, again, for this demonstration, I'll go ahead and disable it by entering a negative one. And for property mapping, I'll go ahead and choose VNC. And click on Create. From here, I'll go ahead and test it out by going to my user interface and clicking on Remote Access. As you can see, all our endpoints are listed here. So I'll go ahead and click on VNC and attempt to connect. We've successfully connected to our VNC machine. I uh, just need to adjust the zoom to go ahead and scale this down. After adjusting the zoom, I'll go ahead and go full screen. As you can see, we're connected to our remote VNC machine all through the browser. Now let me go ahead and get out of full screen, open up another tab and go back to my authentic instance, and go ahead and close my VNC tab and go ahead and adjust my zoom back to 100%. And now let's attempt connecting to all three of our endpoints. So first I'll go ahead and click on RDP. And that was successful, so let me go ahead and open up another tab, go back to my authentic instance. 
and click on remote access one more time and this time I'll click on SSH it seems that connection was also successful I just need to adjust the zoom here and let me go ahead and open up another tab and go back to my authentic instance and choose remote access one more time and we'll go ahead and connect to VNC it looks like we successfully connected let me go ahead and adjust this zoom And as you can see, we're connected to all three of our remote endpoints. And we only needed and accomplished all of this with just one remote access control outpost and one remote access provider, where we can create as many endpoints, aka remote devices, to connect to as we need. If you find this a feature you must have right now, be sure to contact the folks at Authentic Security and obtain your very own enterprise license. Now, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.